Hi guys. First attempt at a video. Um, I'm out in the garage, so sorry about the sound in the background. If you hear cars drive by or dogs barking, I'm out in the garage. Anyway, I want to show you first. I've got colors all made up over here because that's what takes the longest to do is mixing your colors because they don't just come straight out of a bottle um, like this. They do, but you have to mix them with something called um, an extender, a paint extender, which can either be what I use because it's less expensive, glue all, Elmer's glue all, or they make a product called Flo Floetrol that you can get at like Home Depot or Ace Hardware. And professional painters use that as a paint extender. It also helps um, make the paint uh, spread easier and stretch further. And so you want to um, mix that with your paint. And here's, I just, just for an example, just gonna use a small amount here for the yellow. And this is apple barrel paint, yellow, that I get at Walmart for 50 cents a bottle, which is awesome. They make more expensive and actually really better paints, but um, on a budget, this works great. So what I'm doing is just mixing, uh, usually it's about uh, two to one, two, two ounces or two parts of glue all to one part of paint. And uh, you want to always mix that, whether you're using Floetrol or glue all, mix that with your paint first because different paints have different um, levels of thickness. And apple barrel, barrel happens to be fairly thin, so you don't have to put, uh, you don't have to do too much to it. But if it's too thick, you want to add a little water to it. And just a few drops at a time and stir it up real good. And then you want to check it by letting it flow off of your stick or spoon to see how thick it is. And you want it to be like warm honey coming off of your stick. This looks really good. You want it to mound just a little bit right in the center or right when it hits there and then disappear. That's a good, good for most all of your paint techniques or pour techniques, this would be good. Sometimes you need thicker paints for different things, but uh, or a little bit thinner for like a Dutch pour. But right now I'm going. I've got a 16 by 20 canvas with this is the only vase I had left, so I'm gonna pour it on top of this, and it'll flow down, and then after it stops dripping a little bit, we'll move it off. The canvas and then the rest of the paint will go on the canvas we tilt that and hopefully come out with something beautiful um, let's see here I'm gonna line my paints up here and we're I'm gonna do what's called a uh, dirty pour the difference between a clean pour and a dirty pour is clean pour you you pour your colors on individually whether it's on the canvas or on the vase individually and that way you, you really have a lot of control over how much paint and how many different colors you can use and where you want specific colors but I prefer to use a dirty pour and what that is is you layer all the different colors in one cup and then you pour like this onto it so what I'm going to do is start with um, I'm going to start with white. I usually always use white in the beginning. And just go ahead and pour some in the bottom. That. Then I'm going to start with blue. I've got like a royal blue. And pour that in on top of that. Whoop, watch your base, Jeanette. Then I'm going to go with a little bit of copper. I chose to use some copper in with the blues and the greens and the yellow. A little bit of copper. Then I'm going to use a, it's called Laguna, it's kind of a turquoise green. Um, put that in. Then we're going to go with this pale green. Um, 
I don't know what it's called. Ooh, that's a little thick, people. Sorry. I'm going to thin it down just a little bit. Sorry about that. Thought I had them all in the right consistency. It's pretty good. Okay. Then we're going to go green. Then I'm going to use a darker green, kind of an emerald green. Then I'm going to use a little more white. The idea is to try and mostly fill this cup up. You need about at, at least this much, about 20 ounces for a canvas this size. Now I'm going to put some of the yellow in. I don't want to use too much yellow because I don't want it to all turn out green looking. Okay. And then I'm going to start back with my... Uh, I'm going to go with copper again. Hopefully you can see this well. This is um, all new experience for me. So, Okay, then I'm going to go back with my royal blue. Turquoise. Probably hear the air conditioner compressor thing here going behind me. It's a little warm today. I'm going to do a pale green. Go with some white. And yellow. Back with some copper. And I'm going to go, I think, deep green again. close here. And I'm going to go some pale green. And last, I'm going to add a little more white. Okay. Hopefully that's enough paint to cover the canvas. You know, I may just finish up some of this color here and get it a little fuller, more copper. As you can see, I've been reusing my yogurt cups and um, I wash them out, clean them out real good with a paper towel first, throw that away, and then wash them up with soap and water and reuse them. It's all about reusing stuff. I do have this beautiful, big, um, mat here that Tusi got me. Silicone mat. And the reason that works so great is because if, when your paint drips off of your canvas you can uh, let it dry and then peel it off and use that to make jewelry with. It's really cool. Anywho, um, what color do I want? A little bit more of this turquoise. I love this color. And as you can see it looks like my canvas is not level. I meant to tell you that. Always try to get a level out, make sure it's level. I have push pins on the bottom of my canvas to raise it up off of the mat so that uh, the paint drips off easier. Okay, I'm going to take a second and move these paints out of the way. Be right back with you. And I've got something up underneath the uh, canvas to keep that from sinking down in the middle. I'll have to remove that. Remember to remove that before I start messing with the canvas after I'm through with the base. Okay, here we go, folks. 
Let's see what happens. There's a full cup. This should be plenty for this canvas. Okay. This is called kind of a ring pour. You start and go slow and just put it kind of in a circle down the down the vase. And whatever color you put in first is what's going to come out last. Ooh, that's pretty. Oh, yeah, I like that copper in there. Pretty, pretty, pretty. You might have to move this off quicker than I thought if it starts running off one side or the other too much. Sometimes I wish I could stop it and just have it stop right there because I love that. Don't move. Ain't happening. I might, depending on what the uh, canvas looks like when I'm finished tilting, go back and put just a, you can get a, a little pipette and put some uh, silicone in different spots to create cells and I may or may not do that I'm not sure depends on what it looks like when I'm done Ooh, I'm kind of liking that Almost done. Yep, it's going to run off this other side here. That's crazy looking at it. Alright, I think that's good. Okay. Yep. I lift it up over here on this end because it's going to run off. Oh, don't fall. Should use something a little stronger underneath the... It doesn't matter too much if you touch it right, right away because it's going to um, continue to drip. For a bit. What can I put under there? A couple paper towels. Yeah, keep a roll of paper towels handy, always. Yeah, that might help a little bit. Okay. Looking good. Uh, let it drip here just for another few seconds, and then I'm going to go ahead and move it off. You can kind of help it stop dripping a little. Enough to move it. That's going to change. That's going to look different here. When it's done, it stops moving. Okay, here we go. Easy peasy. Yeah. Move it while it's continuing to drip so that if you get any finger marks in there, you can... Oh boy, yeah, it's... There we go. Alright. Here we go, folks. This is the fun part. That looks lovely. And we are going to tilt it from corner to corner, kind of, just to cover the canvas. I like to bring it all back to the center so that you don't lose everything and get done get everything all stretched out. So let's go. Let's get this corner over here. 
I'm going to help it along a little bit. Oh, I need to move that box. Okay, move it this way. Wow. What pretty colors. to just send some of that solid green there off the bottom. That, ooh, that almost looks like blue bonnets. Wow. Well, that's pretty darn awesome. Oh yeah, I like this. Okay. Set it this way just a little bit. Ooh, that's pretty. Alright, moving the box. And I'm going to take my little spatula and touch up these corners. You can get any paint on them. I'm going to send it off the sides so that you get all the sides done too. Oh, pretty, pretty, pretty. Wow. I don't know about you guys, but I love this. That's gorgeous. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to come back later after everything's stopped dripping. Actually, what I'm going to do right now is do a little close-up for you. I'm going to get these gloves off, pull the phone off here and do a little close-up. And then when it's all dry, I'll come back and show what it looks like all dry. Hold on one second, guys. Ciao. Right, remember, I'm not very good at this video stuff, so hang on a second. Oop. Don't drop it in the paint. 